sponsored by Molecule. For years, for years, Apple has made some of the best, and yeah, some of the most expensive displays in the business. Not only did they have great design and terrific panels, they had those Apple logos right up front for people who wanted that look and that experience beyond an iMac for their Mac Pros or MacBook Pros. We got generations of cinema displays, LED displays, Thunderbolt displays. But then, just a few years ago, Apple went and stopped making them from hero to zero, something to nothing, in one Thanos snap, flat. There were rumors, there are always rumors, of a 4K display that Apple was working on but just simply never shipped. But for an agonizingly long period of time measured in pro-user angst years, Apple just didn't offer anything for anyone who didn't want an all-in-one. Until now. Or, well, soon at least. It's complicated. Hit subscribe, light up the bell gizmo so you don't miss the video when all of this actually finally goes live, and then buckle up so we can break it down. I'm Rene Ritchie, and this is Vector. Almost three years ago, at the end of June 2016, Apple discontinued the Thunderbolt display, and I was bummed. I liked Apple displays. They typically brought new technologies like IPS panels and Thunderbolt connectors to market more quickly, simply because they could do things like leverage the iMac volumes, but also because they did so in really well-designed, really well-integrated ways, like one cable to connect to your MacBook. And as much as I didn't like the discontinuation personally, I also thought it was bad for Apple in general. You know the halo effect, where getting customers to buy one product, like an iPhone, gets them to buy additional products, like an iPad or a Mac? Well, I believe there's also an equal and opposite horn effect, where forcing customers to buy things from competitors just encourages them to keep buying things from competitors. Especially when those things are as prominent as a display. Look, just like for most people the interface is the app, for most people the display is the computer. And if you're staring at an LG or Dell or Samsung logo all day, even if you're using a Mac, all you're seeing is LG or Dell or Samsung, not Apple. So all this to say that I'm not only happy Apple is getting back into the display business, but I'm super happy Apple went so far as to pre-announce this all the way back in 2017, announced that they were getting back into the display business. We all know the story. After years with no updates and no news, Apple brought together a tiny group of media type people to talk about how the old Mac Pro had bet wrong on the multi-GPU future and hit a brick wall with thermals. So they were starting over with a new modular design, but one that was still at least a couple of years away. What's more, along with it would be coming a new Pro display. But what exactly does that mean? Would it be the 4K one that'd been rumored for a while? An 8K panel right out of the most fervent, fevered display dork dreams? I know what immediately came to my mind. An absolutely cutting edge, exquisitely calibrated and perfectly color managed panel wrapped up in a design that just looked iconic from the moment you laid eyes on it. Plus all the ports, all of them. I had the chance to ask Marquez Brownlee, MKBHD, what he was looking for from the Pro Display as well. And here's what he said. So for Apple's new Pro Display, there's a couple of things I want. Uh, a matte finish would be great, thin bezels, nice adjustable stand. But most importantly, the panel has to be great. And I suspect it will be. Previous Apple displays have had great panels, but the dream, the dream for me would be a pair of 6K, super bright HDR, incredible displays, color accurate, next to each other on that desk behind me, connected to the Mac Pro. Ah, maybe even uh, bonus points, Face ID and the top. That'd be awesome. I know a lot of others would like things like, you know, powered USB ports that you could plug other things into. I don't really need any of those accessories. I just want a great panel with thin bezels so I can get two of them. Fingers crossed. Thanks, Marquez. Super appreciate it. Now, more recently, there have been a couple of rumors, notably from supply chain exfiltrator extraordinaire Guomingqi and his big 2019 Apple product prediction chart. 31.6 inches, 6K, 3K monitor. Yeah, that's it. That's all, at least in that one. But let's stop the record for a minute and rewind that. Since the Apple cinema display debuted in 1999, Apple has offered it and the displays that followed it in a couple of aspect ratios and a variety of sizes, including 20, 22, 23, 24, and 30 inches, all at 16 by 10, and most recently, 27 inches at 16 by 9. That makes 31.6 inches for the Pro Display, if accurate, decidedly on the big side of that scale. 
And if 6K, 3K means 6K horizontal and 3K vertical, that would mean a two by one aspect ratio, much like this video, and even more decidedly on the wide side as well. Now, I love two by one for video, obviously, but the old web developer and designer in me loves 16 by 10. Hell, give me four by three on an iPad and I'll be happy. Where wide wins though is not in displaying a narrow single column of content cut off from the bottom with far too much space left on both sides. No, it wins at displaying wide content with tools and palettes beside it or multiple columns or windows of content side by side. So again, if accurate, is this a move away from traditional computer displays and even the HD TV standards and towards what we're seeing in more modern smartphones, including the iPhone, or is it just a way to have your traditional content and your palettes too? Last month, Quo added, we believe that mini LED compared to OLED will be a more suitable solution to offer wide color gamut, high contrast, high dynamic range, local dimming features because of its longer life and no burn-in issues for Apple's medium and large size products targeting at productivity positions. Similar as the names may be, mini LED and micro LED, which is another technology Apple's working on, are actually completely different things. Now, I've been reading up on both of them for a while, but if any of you display geeks are watching, please jump into the comments and elaborate. Anyway, my understanding is that micro LED is a next generation display technology that uses arrays of microscopic light emitting diodes. Too long, didn't read. It offers a lot of the advantages of OLED without a lot of the headaches that come with it. Kind of like the best of both display worlds. That is when it's finally mature enough to be brought to market, which isn't today and might not be tomorrow. Apple's been developing it for the watch, which because of the small size and harsh power constraints is almost the perfect test bed for this kind of next generation display tech. Mini LED, at least in its current state, is more like a half step towards a half generation. Too long, didn't read, it makes LED better not by eliminating the backlight, but by improving it. So they don't have all of the advantages of OLED, but they don't have all the disadvantages either. What you end up getting is faster response times, better contrast, wider gamut, and better energy efficiency, and in something much easier to mass produce than micro LED, at least for now. The bottom line is this, if the mini LED part is accurate, the new pro display should also be a damn fine looking display, especially for photographers and videographers, and yeah, display nerds. Just a couple of days ago, Guy Ramble wrote about some of the other features on 9to5Mac. Known only as J290 by the people involved with its development, the new Pro Monitor will be a DCI P3 display with support for HDR, auto brightness, night shift, and the True Tone technology, which can adjust the white point of the display to match the ambient light color. Guy also says it'll be deeply integrated with devices so that you can tune minimum and maximum brightness, color space, auto brightness, white point, night shift, and more. Save those presets to the menu bar as shortcuts and even export and import them between devices. As far as ports go, there haven't been any rumors yet, but here is hoping for a full complement of USB-A, USB-C, Ethernet, and SD card. You know, everything that puts Pro in Pro. So when could we see it? Well, if everything is on track for the new Mac Pro, possibly as soon as next week at WWDC 2019. Back in 2013, Apple showed off the then new Trash Can Mac Pro. In 2017, same thing with the iMac Pro. Neither shipped until the end of their respective years, but because WWDC is the big pro show, Apple chose to give everyone watching just a little peek at what was coming next for pros. Now, one thing we absolutely won't see from Apple is anything like Molecule. I've been using mine for about five months now, ever since my nerdy friends in Silicon Valley showed me the results they'd been getting, even and especially during the wildfires. And so far, so great. That's because Molecule has technology that's capable of destroying air pollutants at a molecular level. Its technology has been verified by science, but more importantly, it's been tested by real people in the real world, and that's what makes it so compelling to me. Molecule helped allergy and asthma sufferers around the country better cope with their conditions and significantly reduce their symptoms. To get yours, just go to molecule.com, that's M-O-L-E-K-U-L-E.com, and enter Vector at checkout to save $75. Thanks, Molecule, and thanks to all of you for supporting the show. So, will we see Senior Vice President of Worldwide Marketing, Phil Schiller, or Vice President of Hardware Engineering, John Turnus, take the stage, 
turn out the lights and blow us away with a video showing off not just the new Mac Pro, but that new Pro display. We'll have to wait and see. But for now, I'd love to know what you want to see. Hit like, hit subscribe, it really helps out the channel, and then hit up the comments below and let me know. Thank you so much for watching and see you next video.